creative director here and thank you for coming and I really appreciate it. It's a wonderful time to bring women together and really show how much power we have. So thank you so much. <laughs> so this poem, it's not a poem, it's more of a story. Um, I'll give you a little background. Um, I have epilepsy, but I've had it for many years. And so this is just a little story about some of the things that, you know, as a child that I went through. It was seventh grade and the annual pep rally was about to start. The multi-purpose room was packed with seventh and eighth graders. I watched them pour into the room in clusters. Boys pushing other boys, girls with their cliques. You can tell they were excited to be out of class. Earlier the day, I earned every wrinkle on my Lady Tiger's cheer uniform and looked at myself in the mirror. I envisioned myself showing off my dance moves and was proud that I made the squad. Finally, the moment had arrived. As I sat with the other cheerleaders, tying the bows in our hair, adjusting our skirts, we giggled at the idea of being the center of attention. The teachers swerved around the room like hawks, overseeing everyone's moves. I spotted my crush in the audience, and we shared a glance that made me more nervous. I was nervous for all the normal reasons my, any seventh grade girl might be. I was nervous to be on stage, nervous to be in front of my entire school, and nervous to see the boy I liked. But that day, there was something else I was nervous about that was less typical, something I was struggling to barely understand myself. A year previous to that very moment, I began experiencing episodes that were later named blackouts. During each of these episodes, it felt like I lost track of time. It was like my conscious mind disappeared. When I reappeared and became conscious again, I felt the instant need to catch up. Sometimes it would take about 30 seconds to remember what I had stopped doing. Was I clean the dishes? How did I get here? To make things worse, I felt crazy. And these experiences scared me. Worse, my parents and my aunts wouldn't believe me. They would call me chamaca malcriada. I pled to them to believe me, but it only made it worse. It took me six years to find an answer. Through lots of research, books, online forums, and through an act of kindness, I finally learned the word epilepsy. I was experiencing seizures. I had epilepsy and I didn't know it. I still experience seizures. Epilepsy is known in neurology as a disorder in the brain that causes repeated seizures. My blackouts and I had a name of their own, absent seizures. The misfiring of neurons in my brain caused me to have moments of lost consciousness Usually they would happen up to 100 times a day and most people didn't even realize it. The time had come. We stepped on the stage and waited for the music to play. From the speakers, we heard our song and began dancing. Boom, dynamite. Filled up the entire multi-purpose room and I started moving. Then all of a sudden, I blacked out. It's difficult to explain how I felt, but the music turned into pure silence. Everyone and everything around me transformed into a dark room. It was impossible for me to reach out or even see my way through it. It felt like minutes or even hours could have passed by. I returned with my mind jumbled and felt like I had to take a short nap. By that time, we were still on the same routine. I felt myself frozen a frozen cheerleader standing and looking around the room with a confused look on her face while my fellow teammates danced around me. When I realized that it was a blackout, I glanced at the girls next to me and began to move. I stepped back into the choreography and continued. I made it through the entire pep rally. I was glad it was over, but I kept imagining all the kids upset, stared, and made side comments to their friends as their fingers pointed towards me on stage. Of course I was angry and upset for the embarrassment I had caused myself in front of all my junior high class. After it was over, 
We walked over to our PE room and gathered in excitement about the whole pep rally. Our coach was high-fiving all of us girls. The girls were hugging each other, proud of their performance. And in all this joy, we never touched on what happened with me on stage. Not even a teacher who was in that multi-purpose room did. But I was glad it was never brought up because it made me feel like I could quietly quit from the team. I went up to the coach after school and said to her that this was just not for me. Throughout high school, I made up excuses for why I stopped talking in the middle of class of a conversation or for a crazy unconscious decision like walking across a busy major street. Sorry, um, I was thinking about something. What's one of my main excuses? That time I couldn't come up with an excuse for everyone that saw what happened at that pep rally. I still flash back to that moment Remember how it felt to be empowered and giving it all up for acceptance. As an adult, I have learned that epilepsy doesn't own who I am. My senior year, I refused to graduate without having created an unforgettable last year, and so I tried out for the varsity school, varsity soccer team and made it. It's a very same lesson of why I keep pushing myself to uncomfortable spaces. They have helped me explore who I am and understand the world around me. The story has been hard to write, especially since I'm writing about myself. Feeling accepted is a satisfying feeling, but one of the greatest feelings for me is that I'm accepted by who I am, not for what the disorder I have. I am still at times that frozen cheerleader, but this time much braver and I step into new stages in my life, even if I have to miss some time. Thank you.